Previously on Drake Paragon. Try to stick with the watch rotation. I don't know that I really agree with that. We'll be there in a few hours. That's your superpower. I don't want that to be my superpower. Wow. I want a better superpower. Could you summarize Paragon in Iceland? Danger, danger, everywhere. I've never seen anything like it. I don't like the looks of that. I'm gonna head for it. This is beautiful. <laughs> Welcome to Westman, huh? Thank you. After a lot of motoring around, we chose the most protected spot in the entire harbor, which is right here. That red building just beyond Paragon is the harbor master's office. So one of the locals came down as soon as we tied up the boat and started chatting with us, a really nice man named Daniel. Uh, Daniel said that this town of Vestman has about 1,100 people who live here. And career-wise, most of them work on fishing boats. Fishing boats, he said, that were some of the largest fishing boats in the world. He said that this is a really quiet town. They don't have a police station. They don't have a hospital. They do have a school and a market and a restaurant. And we actually picked up some Wi-Fi right here as well, which is pretty cool. I get the impression that the locals are finding us a real curiosity. Daniel told us that it's rare that a foreign cruising sailboat actually comes in here and docks here. He said that there used to be a larger population here before, back in the days when the fishing was done by individuals that bought fishing boats and caught the fish themselves. But today, the fishing is done by these large companies that have these gigantic fishing ships. And instead of people having their own fishing boat, they work for the big companies. This guy on a motorcycle. Hi. <laughs> We did notice as we were coming in that there are a couple of big fish farms coming into the harbor, this big netted off area where they're farming fish. <laughs> nice bike! <laughs> are you from here? From yeah. My name is Ray. My name is Torbjörn. Torbjörn. Nice to meet you, Torbjörn. Yes. What are these houses there? Is boat houses. Fish? Boat houses. All those are boat houses. There are boats in them. Yeah. yeah. My house is... So yeah. All right. Uh, the white house with red roof. A building down there. He grew up here and he's got that cool motorcycle and he's just driving around. He said he drives a truck. Got some more people here checking out the boat. Welcome to Fire Islands. It's a long way home. How many are you? We've just been here for a few hours. We've already met several groups of people who've just come out, noticed the boat tied up here and come out to say hello. An older man driving his car, he actually let us use his cell phone to call customs. And then customs drove over from the biggest town of Torshaven, which is on this island. He took about an hour to get here. He came aboard the boat and we went through all the paperwork and he said that when we're ready to leave, we don't need to call customs or Coast Guard or anybody. When we're done here, we can just go. And he was very nice. So let me tell you what I've learned so far about this town. People have been pointing out stuff. From where I'm standing right here, I can see all of their homes and pretty much everything else that there is in this town. Here's the harbor entrance and there's Paragon. That 
is an old folks home. They've got about 30 elderly people there and they live in that home. Those buildings right on the water are boat houses. People keep their boats inside and protected in those houses and then they can launch them from there. And moving on, there's a church right there and a little gravesite out front. It's just so beautiful. The mountains, the water. We've got a waterfall right there. building right there is the school. All grade levels. That building and also this building right there. Those are the schools. Fog is rolling in. Check that out. Boy, am I glad that we got in before the fog did. Beautiful place. <laughs> we just met Daniel, who is an engineer on some sort of commercial fishing vessel and spends days at sea. And he's from here. He drove by earlier and saw our boat and said hello and said he'd come by later, and he did with his father, mother, girlfriend, and her baby, and, uh, and their little dog. <laughs> and so we hung out and chatted for a while out in front of the boat, and then everybody came down below to board Paragon. We gave them the tour. Daniel and I had an interesting conversation about the relationship that the Pharaohs has with Denmark. Prior to World War II, Denmark ruled the Pharaohs, even though the people were not Danish, they were Faroese. Danish was required in schools instead of Faroese. The Faroese people felt that they were having a lot of Danish rules imposed on them and didn't have the ability to change things. During World War II, Denmark was overthrown by the Germans and the pharaohs ended up going to the British. And then after World War II, the pharaohs went back to Denmark, but the arrangement was not as it was before, and I don't know the details, but he says that with the current arrangement, Faroese is the official language taught in schools, and there is more independence, but still not entirely, and many Faroese people are not ultimately happy with the arrangement with Denmark, where Denmark has too much control. But, I mean, I don't know the real in-depth detailed history, and I haven't talked to enough people about it, and a uh, lot to learn, but... We're in Pharaoh! <laughs> just still can't get over how beautiful it is. I feel very welcome here by everyone that we've encountered, from the customs official to all the people who walked by the boat, all so friendly and welcoming. Mm -hmm. You thought that sheep was a buffalo? <laughs> I still don't understand how those sheep go anywhere other than the side of the mountain because it seems to be pretty much all closed off there. Maybe that's just like they live on the side of the mountain, that's it. No, I think they climb all around. Mm. I'm really looking forward to just sleeping more than like three hours. The aft cabin is a disaster. Well, it won't take it that much work to 
bring it back to sleeping mode. I'm really glad this fog was not here when we came in. Yeah, look at that, it's so dense. That would have been a nightmare. Like it's so dense that you can't see through it now. Do you know his name that was just here? The younger guy was Daniel. And the older? Daniel Father. Hello, Daniel Father. Now I asked him, like, are there any places that we should not miss? Like, oh, yeah. you know, I can't believe you didn't see fill in the blank. Mm -hmm. And he said it kind of depended on what we wanted to do. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of festivals. He said a lot of the festivals kind of culminate into National Day. You know, every weekend, like, there's music festivals. He's like, and there's handball and football and I don't know what else. But then he said after National Day, things really start to wind down. Mm. There's a folk festival down here. He said he doesn't know where it is. Depending on the year, they go back and forth between these two. He said, this place, very dangerous, submerged rocks. As you're going in, this place is okay. Everybody says that Tayyavori is the place to go, and the other place is not so great. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. The book says that, Kevin says that. Now this local person has confirmed it. Yeah, he said this, that place, that island that we mm -hmm. were looking at. He's like, don't go there. He's like, many submerged rocks. He's like, don't even try it. And then I asked, like, how do you get from island to island? I'm like, are there bridges? Are there tunnels? Are there ferries? And so he went through. So I marked all the places. There are bridges and tunnels and ferries and stuff. Hmm. So I marked everything. He said, getting down to here is so easy. He said, you just go down here. And I was like, someone told us not to go through there. And yeah. he's like, yeah. He's like, but he's like going on the inside, just down to go to Toshan. Toshan. Torshaun. Torshaun. Torshaun? Or just Halm. Because I've been calling Tor -shaun. it Tor -shaven, Yeah, I know. Everybody's like, fine. It's like saying Gloucester. And people are like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I was like, how do you pronounce it? And he's like, Torshaun. Torshaun. Or just Halm. Halm? He's like, that's just a local thing. <laughs> and the water pump thinks yeah, so too. We should keep that off. So he said, if you get the current going down, you can just go all the way down in just like in no time because you've got the current going. He's like, so you have to be really careful going around the tip here. It reminded me of Greenland almost. If you come all the way down and you know, like it's good now, but the current isn't quite there. He's like, there's a harbor right here that you can tuck into and wait for the current to get good and then you can go around there. Hmm. You really have to understand those tide tables. He said sometimes the current increases the tide in places. Don't do it. Don't do it. Oh, oh you're gone. Oh my god. Drake. Hmm. It's your watch. No, it's not. <laughs>